I'm a reality designer. Maybe you haven't heard of reality designers before. Well, you would be surprised how many of us there are already. Um, in a way, movie directors are also reality designers, but there is one difference. If you watch a movie, you're not really part of the scene. You remain a passive spectator. So what do reality designers do? We bend reality, mix reality and fiction, or create alternative realities around users. So they become part of the scene, and the scene becomes their current reality. I, for example, am a, a researcher of extended reality projects, and I teach students how to design um, and test augmented, mixed, and virtual reality applications. It's pretty much a profession for all-round adventurers. You are a movie director, but you are also a user experience designer. And there is no box, like you see here. We operate at 360 degree. So you can place an actor in a VR scene, for example, but you also have to convince the user to look this way, because otherwise it's not much fun, right? And you can hardly rely on established concepts and conventions. We got used to a computer mouse or swiping on a smartphone, but now uh, we are entering new territory. Sometimes um, actions are triggered by focusing your sight on something. Um, other devices use gesture recognition or hand controllers. Design possibilities are expanding rapidly, so you have to be constantly aware of the latest technology trends. So if you prefer to move in uh, fixed conditions, then working in this field is probably the worst job you can imagine. But for me, it isn't just a job, it's my passion. I can hear your thoughts. Great, what a lucky woman you are to have a job that is more than a job. Come on, rub it in our faces. No worries, I won't. Because you also know what the problem is with passion, right? Very often, it's a, a hike along the ridge. Sure, sometimes it's as if your soul is breathing pure oxygen, unleashing creativities and powers that you didn't know existed, convincing you that you're capable of anything. But passion can also be ruthless, feverish, painful. It can uh, rob you of sleep, driving you almost crazy, forcing you to go on despite setbacks, no matter how tired you are. Um, and being passionate about emerging technologies. Have you ever heard of that? The Gartner hype cycle? Uh, the life cycle a technology goes through and, and the various stages? It looks a bit like a roller coaster, right? And if you are riding on that wave, it's definitely a damn roller coaster ride. Ten years ago, it would have needed a lengthy introduction to augmented, mixed and virtual reality, which aren't completely separate things, as you see here. These are labels for different points on a spectrum. We call the whole thing XR because it's much easier. I don't like to talk about XR anyway, and you know why. Have a look at this cake. Talking about XR is like trying to explain how delicious that tastes. You have to explain it, uh, you have to experience it to really understand what I'm talking about. Um, take my dad as an example. Uh, he's 72 and he was very skeptical. I almost had to force him to put on this headset. And I almost had to fight to get it back. <laughs> Anyway, I just picked a few examples in case you still don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Um, today, you can put on a VR headset and walk around the house, which hasn't been built, and see how it will look like. These people, for example, are planning a new supermarket, and they are using virtual reality technology to collaborate with the architect. 
XR is also very useful in industry because um, we can use smart glasses to insert instructions directly into the field of, view, uh, of the technicians. Rehabilitation technology can help um, patients recuperate after an accident or a stroke because neuroscientists found out that if you show movements virtually, the brain activates muscles and that the brain is able uh, to rebuild damaged regions. Nurses often have difficulties to draw blood from patients because veins are difficult to locate, and today we can visualize that. The National Theatre is offering smart glasses to people with hearing loss, so they see the transcript of the dialogues. Education offers huge possibilities. From learning psychology, we know that knowledge is better retained if various senses are uh, stimulated simultaneously and if learners can also interact with materials. So in one project, we collaborate with a large provider of language courses in Switzerland. You know what the problem is with language learning. It usually happens in a non-realistic classroom. So we want to design a new English course where virtual reality uh, content is part of the didactic offer. Because various studies show that immersion helps students to make the transfer between theoretical knowledge and the practical use. You know, this moment when you can't put away the book you're reading because you just have to know how it, the story ends, or when you sit in the movie and you don't realize that you're scattering popcorn everywhere because you are so absorbed by the scene. This is immersion. And immersion is the key of every XR experience. Only if we get that right, we can draw the user into the scene. So we send learners on a tour through five continents and with the help of VR, it feels as if they are really there. Um, they can interact with other people, real actors. For example, if they are in a, in a restaurant in Shanghai or if they book a, a tour in, in Australia. And because they are really there and need to interact with other people, it is far more realistic than doing a uh, an activity in a classroom. These are just some examples of various XR applications, and we are only at an early stage. Personally, I am convinced that XR is going uh, to change the world we know completely. Imagine not having to fly across the globe to uh, attend a business meeting, because you can uh, meet your work colleagues in a virtual meeting space. And I just can't wait to see this happen. <laughs> <laughs> this fascinates me. With software, we can create environments which are not real, but which feel real. We can use software um, to help people, to make life easier, to support them in their daily lives. Today, we use headsets to send learners explore worlds which wouldn't be normally possible. For example, as an insect. And one day, we will probably won't even need headsets anymore because we have this. I really like this quote from Alex Kipman, one of the creators of the HoloLens. In physics, there are laws you can't bend, but in software, you can bend everything, so nothing is impossible. The only thing that holds you back in XR is lack of imagination. That sounds easy now, right? But I can tell you it is not. Many of these examples uh, originated at the moment when it, it was thought that it was technologically impossible. It needed people convinced that it could be possible. And breaking new ground, acting outside of the box, is very demanding and exhausting. That's why we usually take baby steps. Um, it's definitely 
safer, but not really a game changer. I approached uh, XR 10 years ago when hardly anybody knew about it. Uh, I was living and working in Rome at that time. Um, I was a teacher in my former life and I also taught Latin amongst other subjects. So on a beautiful hot day, I visited the Colosseum. It was a very special moment because I read a lot about it. And um, when I finally stood there and looked into the arena, I thought that it was completely boring. <laughs> no gladiators, ancient rock stars, um, no aristocratic groupies who paid a lot to spend the night with the sex symbols of that time, in case they didn't die in the arena, of course. Um, no roaring bloodthirsty audience that could decide about life and death. Of course, the ruins were impressive, but they felt dead. There was nothing but hot stone blocks and, and countless tourists, at least without selfie sticks back then. So I sat there and thought, what if I could rent glasses or something similar instead of the boring audio guide? Uh, some device with which I could wander around and, and I will be showing videos and pictures to see how it really looked then. Maybe I would even be inter uh, able to interact with the characters. This idea stayed with me as I went home and did some research. I mean, someone in the world must have come up with this idea. And I learned that there are technologies which can expand reality. But as I mentioned, that was 10 years ago, and we were really at an embryonic stage. But that crazy idea just settled in my head, and I couldn't get rid of it. Uh, so I said, OK, if nobody is going to do that for you, you have to do it yourself. Remember, I was a teacher with no technical background, so that was rather naive, of course. But I didn't mean to do that myself. I just wanted to uh, visit the Colosseum or other historical sites and um, yeah, to see and, and hear what it looked like then. And all I wanted was to find someone who said, cool idea, let's try it. Well. My first attempts failed miserably. Uh, when I told people about it, they uh, just looked at me as if I was an alien. They couldn't see it. And I said, OK, if they don't see it, you will have to show them. Best with the video, which I've never done before. It's my first video ever, and I really hope that it will never end up in the hands of my students. It's about seven minutes long, and this is a tiny extract of it. What you have seen until now is a virus that uses today's technology. But why not think bigger? What if simple interactions would be possible that break the linear character of the story? The user could, for example, interact with the characters by choosing one of the multiple answers, or it can choose between different storylines. Head-mounted displays are becoming more professional and more available. If you combine these elements, you get a writer's which embeds directly in the user's experience and that the user can influence with his movements. Reality and fiction can be combined and the necessary developments are foreseeable. A true masterpiece, right? Um, but hey, it, it served its purpose. People now understood what I wanted. Uh, unfortunately, most of the gentlemen I contacted, this contacted still thought that I was completely crazy and I, they didn't he hesitate to tell me so. Um, ten years ago, there weren't that many women involved in the tech industry. Uh, in fact, even now. The absolute low point was reached when a nice gentleman told me that I should rather have children because that's what women are supposed to do. But I also met good people who shared my vision, who um, offered support. But after a while, I just had to accept that the time wasn't right, the technology wasn't mature, and that it would need some more years to finally get there. Having to put my idea on standby was frustrating. But in the meantime, I had dealt so much with the matter and was fascinated with all that could be possible that I just couldn't stop. So uh, I decided this is what I want to do. So I quit my well-paid job 
enrolled in a part-time master's degree and uh, had to take uh, on low-paid jobs in the beginning to uh, gain experience in my newly chosen career. It was very rough at some times and I often doubted if it was really worth it. But in the end, it turned out that it was. And I know that uh, if the road would have been all straight uh, and flat, I wouldn't have learned half as much in the last 10 years. Having been there gives me an also a better understanding for my students because some of them face similar challenges. And some of them did the first uh, step by enrolling at the university, but find it difficult uh, to find a job. Uh, they, some of them have to write tons of applications and are almost in despair because uh, yeah, that's frustrating. It's hard to keep trying and trying. But if it's finally it works, uh, you gain so much strength because you know that you only made it because you didn't give up, because um, you believed in something and in yourself. Another thing I've learned, we live in interesting times. Never have we had that many possibilities, so always dream big. Do not let your imagination be stopped by hurdles. Um, we have this course where we let students design XR applications so they, that they learn what to consider, how to test their concepts. And some students come up with very interesting ideas. Um, one group uh, designed uh, an augmented reality uh, public transport public uh, transport uh, application to help people standing on a train track finding a free spot in the train. And the stu students were unsure if it was feasible and almost rejected it. And guess what? Uh, a few months later, the Federal Way uh, in Switzerland released an app that does exactly what the students thought was impossible. It takes patience, even if the tech wheel is turning faster and faster. Mm -hmm. You are probably asking yourself what happened to the idea with the Colosseum. Well, we are already one step closer, thanks to a bunch of other enthusiasts. Today you can put, uh, rent a, a headset and have an immersive experience at some points of the tour. It's still not what I imagine the future of tourism will be, but I know that one day the impossible will be possible. And all it needs is a huge amount of passion. So fasten your seatbelt for a future roller coaster ride with XR. And always remember, there is more than one reality. And all you need to do is to choose yours and make it happen. Thank you very much.